Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews, the show where we sit down with local elected leaders from all across Canada. Over the course of this episode, we will be learning about who our guest is, what drives them, and how they are working to make their community a better place for everyone who lives there. Now, we are honored to welcome to the show from Thompson Nicola Regional District in British Columbia, Director Yusuf Sow. Director Yusuf, welcome to the show. Thank you, Chris. Thank you for the uh, invite today. I, I am looking forward to this conversation because I, I don't know what a director is. So we're going to learn a little bit more about that in a few minutes. But I'm going to start off with the same question I ask every single local elected leader who comes on this show. So you're no exception. Where did your sense of duty to serve your community come from? So um, I moved to the uh, Thompson Nicolay Regional District Area A, um, well, specifically uh, Clearwater in the summer of 2019. Um, I moved there from Hong Kong, where I lived for 15 years prior to uh, returning to Canada. Um, and, you know, part of the reason I wanted to move back to Canada was I wanted my children to grow up, you know, kind of have the opportunities and, and education that I had back in the 80s and 90s in, in, in the lower mainland. Um, so why I ran for local elections, that's uh, OK to um, to shorten it to a few sentences um, in early 2022. A uh, few local friends in Clearwater uh, who were residents in Area A uh, talked to me about this uh, local election coming up at the end of the year um, and said, hey, you know, uh, Yusuf, uh, you know, you've been doing a lot of volunteering and, and trying to help out in the community. Maybe you should, uh, you know, try and run for it. Um, at that point, I was I, I did, you know, sink for a few long months there. Um, and my end takeaway was, you know, I've got nothing really to lose. And I think, I think, yeah, it is a civic duty for all of us to, you know, at least take some interest in, uh, in governance. Um, because obviously without, you know, without participants, um, a democracy can't really call itself a democracy. Um, and that's kind of like what I actually reached out to the, uh, my, uh, the incumbents, uh, my predecessor, Ms. Carol Schaefer. Um, and I, you know, I told her very uh, honestly that opinion as well that, hey, you know, um, I'm running not not as a criticism of, of what you're doing, but just as an option to uh, to voters and, you know, our, our residents so that whoever wins has a stronger mandate so that, you know, whoever wins doesn't, you know, we. Uh, we kind of disarm the uh, the residents from that, you know, complaint of, oh, we had no choice anyways. We were stuck with you. So so that's what that's what my thoughts were. Um, and uh, and, you know, uh, moving I've, I've lived urban all my whole life um, between Hong Kong and, uh, and Vancouver. Um, I started to get a feeling after, you know, two years living in, in Clearwater, especially um, during the height of COVID, um, there were some, uh, uh, you know, government uh, um, uh, managed issues like healthcare infrastructure that were perhaps underserving the rural communities. So, um, and I just wanted to, you know, try to do something, uh, whatever I can uh, for that, for my area. Yeah. So there's a lot to unpack there, but I yeah. want to start with this. Uh -huh. I, I'm pretty well knowledgeable in the municipal local governance of this country. This is the first time I've interviewed someone where I don't know what their title means. I've never heard someone be called a director before at the local governance level. So you have yeah. to explain to me and you get the honor of explaining to my listeners from coast to coast to coast. What the heck is a director of a regional district in the province of British Columbia? <laughs> oh boy, no, no pressure, right? Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, and, and I have to uh, give, give a disclaimer beforehand. Um, you know, uh, I am a newbie to this as well. And uh, I, I am still discovering, you know, what is my lane and what is not my lane. Um, you know, in uh, in my work as a regional district director. Um, so the Thompson Nicola Regional District, um, it's a regional district government, which is unique to British Columbia. I would, as I've 
been told, and I'm pretty fairly certain of that. Um, so uh, it is uh, a board of director uh, with a total number uh, of 20, oh, 28 of us um, with member municipalities such as uh, Kamloops, uh, Logan Lake, uh, Merritt, uh, Clearwater. Um, and then there are electoral areas, uh, which are kind of like, it's kind of like unincorporated areas, okay. um, which does not have a municipality. So clear what, so air, my area, area A, Wells Gray country used to include Clearwater before they incorporated. Um, so after their incorporation, they became their own, they, they became a municipal member of the um, Thompson Nicola Regional District. Um, and with their population, they have one um, director to sit on the board of directors. Uh, with uh, bigger cities such as Kamloops, because of the population, they have seven uh, directors sitting on the board. So. Um, so we make decisions, we vote on uh, issues from, uh, you know, bylaws to uh, expenditures on uh, parks, uh, solid waste management. Um, off the top of my head, and, and I'm really sorry, Scott Hildebrand, uh, our CAO, I know he gave us a very long introduction. And He's going to listen to this and go, was, he, Yusuf was not paying attention to me while I was giving <laughs> well, my... Was not listening to my PowerPoint. Um, oh, and, and sorry, Jamie Vieira as well, our general manager of operations. Um, it was, I, I, but I, I'm fairly, it was over a hundred uh, services. Uh, you know, Thompson Nicola Regional Library um, is a function, the library is a function that we serve, the TNRD. Um, yeah, solid waste management, the, the, the eco depots, uh, the, lo the small community water system of which there is one in Vavenby in my area. Um, and some small, again, small, small um, uh, liquid waste sewer systems. Um, so we do a lot of stuff, but um, there is a lot of misconception. Like we don't do stuff like roads. Um, those are those are the municipalities and the province, MOTI for um, the highways and such. Um, and uh, and yeah, so we sit as a board of director and we vote on those issues uh, brought up by uh, either brought up by staff pro, uh, preemptively or um, or we as directors give direction to staff to look into. Um, for instance, for my area uh, in Vavenby, we have a we have a water system, but it's uh, it's uh, taking surface water, which requires a treatment plant um, uh, from interior health standards uh, because we don't have a water treatment plant. Um, a lot of times because of the turbidity, which is measured by the um, by a metering system. Um, as soon as it reaches above certain level, then it becomes a boil water advisory. Um, obviously, we don't, you know, want a permanent boil water advisory for a community. So, so I'm asking staff to look into it and, you know, uh, provide reports and also designs to be grants ready um, as soon as there's something coming up from the province or, or the federal government. Um, so what it I've sounds really like you are a level of government that is also inter instrumental in the day to day lives of your community. The decisions you make around that uh, director's table, and I've watched a few of your council meetings. Yes, I'm one of those nerds who actually watches council meetings on <laughs> on his spare time, and it sounds like you make important decisions. And it sounds like the decisions you make are affecting the day-to-day -day lives of your communities. While they may not know what a director does or what a director is, you're making decisions that impact their lives. How important is it for you to be prepared when you go into that council meeting, that director's meeting, and sit down at that table and make informed decisions that will be based on or dictate the day-to-day -day lives of people in your community? Um, I, well, I think obviously very important uh, <laughs> of my job um, because, yeah, these are, so a lot of these services actually, yeah, majority of these services are user uh, either user fee-based or uh, property taxes. So obviously, you know, uh, property tax uh, going up, has been, uh, you know, with, because of inflation, has been a major concern for everybody, especially in rural areas, which where we do not have the same level of economic opportunities uh, as urban areas. Um, so, it, yeah, it's very important that, I, you know, we don't go wasting money on, you know, projects that the community doesn't, 
need or want. Um, there is. Uh, so how do you, how do you decide detail. that? Yeah. How do you decide that? Uh, because you go talk to people, and I guarantee you, they probably come up to you and say, "Our community needs this. Our wants in District A are this, that, and the other." And then you have to take those back to the director's table and say, "Okay." X, Y, and Z is what my community needs, but we only have a certain uh, amount of money to dictate what those needs and wants are. And you know, and I know that municipalities can't run, regional districts can't run deficits. So you have uh, to make the tough decisions. So how do you decide yeah. what the needs and wants of your community are with uh, engagement? Or is it, are you hoping that your decisions you make are for the best of the community? Um, come, uh, both. Um, so we have, <laughs> so in, engagement, um, you know, how do I engage like a, a, an area the size of, oh, including Wells Gray Park, it'd be pretty close to half the size of Lower Mainland or something, but pretty massive. You know, how do I engage that? So we have what's called a, in, in my area, we have a Wells, another mouthful, Wells Gray Country Surfaces Committee. Um, so we have five uh, small communities. We call them, or my predecessor called them uh, hamlets, uh, Birch okay. Island, Black Police, Black Boy, uh, et cetera. And I have a representative uh, from each of these communities. And these representatives, like, so I moved to the area, you know, relatively short period of time, four years ago. Um, but a lot of these uh, representatives that um, I recently appointed to, um, they've been lifelong residences in, the, in their communities. So, and then we just had a meeting a um, couple days ago. Um, we have a meeting uh, twice a year. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, <laughs> once every quarter. Um, and we go around the table and we we talk about, okay, what's been going on? What, what are the issues and concerns um, from the residents? And also, what do the representatives themselves think? And they would have to, you know, obviously, say, for example, Burrish Island, they, uh, a few people reached out on social media, hey, we need a dog park. And then uh, the local representative would give me their opinions and what they've been hearing, actually, no, not just social media, but actual neighbors and such. Um, so it, and then obviously have to back that up with, you know, some rationale with, you know, so for instance, um, it, dog parks make sense in an urban area, but when we're, it's the countryside all around us, where it's, it's a dog park, all, you know, all around us, as long as you clean up after yourself, the, um, the rationale of spending that, you know, uh, community tax dollars on a project like that, it, it's harder to justify. Um, so, so I might even, and then, and also staff also provides their feedback to me as well whether or not i should actually push it ahead um with a motion on the uh, on the floor in the board of directors meetings um mm -hmm. so and then the other side is also yeah i i also make my own judgment calls and obviously i have to back them up and explain to residents why um recently we had um Again, social media, the t signs of our times, um, requests for the um, the free dump days uh, back before before COVID 2019. I I had yeah I just had I experienced one uh, free dump days before they canceled it during COVID because of restrictions and gatherings and such. Um, and over that time, uh, staff TNRD staff uh, made a uh, a study and a report. Um, you know findings of how much it actually those days cost to the taxpayers. It ended up to be quite a significant amount across the region for those free dump days that cost taxpayers $400,000 for just one day of free dumping. Um, and there was other various reasons, uh, issues like people dumping asbestos in, or trying to hide it into the, into the, into the waste and just the lack of staff, uh, labor shortage, especially right now. So I had to go back and explain to residents, um, you know, facts-based decision-making that this is the reason why we can't. And, and here are some of the ways we can, you know, mitigate that. If anybody it's, you know, having financial issues with using the dump, they are like a dollar a bag. And, and a lot of the stuff, like big stuff, like fridges, mattresses, the TN already actually already is, is already free. You just need to bring it to the, to the Eco Depot. So I am suggesting to the community to organize ourselves, you know, with volunteers, if somebody can't physically move the fridge, maybe we'll move it for them um, and, and reach out to me. So, yeah. So it, it's both engagement via the, yeah, sorry. 
how does communication play in the role of your day-to-day life as a director? Because for a for a area the size that you've just explained, half the size of lower yep. mainland BC, um, I'm assuming you can't go talk to every single person every single day of the week, but you want to. You want to try and get out there while you have the uh, Hamlets coming to you. And I'm not using I'm using uh, your predecessor's words. The Hamlets come to you in the Wells Gray surface yep. area. You also want to talk to people one-on-one as well. Um, social media is great. It's a double-edged sword. And I'm the one pro- <laughs> prominent person who will say I, the social media has been the downfall of our society, but that's just me. And <laughs> anyone who says disagrees with me, send me messages because I know I've I got uh, director uh, uh, Sal on the show because of social media. But do you hold like coffee talks? Like, is there other ways that you engage with the day-to-day people in your community that they feel like you're being heard and they're, you're not just at a table ignoring their wants and wills of their day-to-day lives? Um, so, uh, yes, social media, I think that has played a massive uh, part of my campaign and my current day-to-day work uh, for the regional district. Um, and also uh, we do... I do hold um, community meetings at each of those uh, five hamlets uh, twice a year um, and uh, and gather feedback. What I found is, again, because our, po- yeah, our geographical size is big, but our population base is actually quite, quite small. So uh, people do, uh, they call me. I've had uh, text messages, calls actually the other day about the uh, share shed idea. Um, and I, again, had to explain verbally just to, you know, what reasons why, unfortunately, and then how we can, you know, we can come to a middle ground somewhere. Um, and then, uh, but yeah, no, social media, definitely. I, I, I agree, you know, I, I agree. It, it is uh, <laughs> the downfall of society. But at the same time, I, I think it's important to, to people like yourself, too. I see yeah. you using the as bringing the tide back the other way, using it positively to bring people together. Um, because there's a few you know, drops in the bucket that that work in yeah. the great the, for the betterment of our communities. Um, I yeah. want to I, I want to turn to the region for a second because I am cautious of time and I know you are a busy man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I want to turn to Thompson Nicola Regional District. And before I ask yeah. this question, I'm going to preface this by saying this is a conversation between the director and myself. This is not a motion of the board. This is not a policy of the board. This is his opinion. I usually get emails about this question and i do not know (laughs) why but here we are in 2023 so yusuf in your opinion what is the biggest issue facing the regional district today so uh sorry and and when you say regional district uh, is it like my electoral area or the whole tnrd if you want to go TNRD first and then your electoral district, or if you just want to talk about the electoral district A, we can just talk about that. Whatever one you want to choose, I'm happy to go with. Yeah. Um, well, actually, both. okay, well, I'll, I'll go with TNRD first. Um, but I think most both of them align pretty well each, with each other. Um, so uh, infrastructure. Um, that's uh, TNRD. TNRD itself is pretty rural. Our biggest center is Kamloops. Uh, the next biggest, I, I, be- I believe, I believe Merritt's is the next biggest. So we're, we're, you know, Kamloops itself compared to even the, um, you know, uh, the Okanagan, we're, we're quite smaller in size. Um, in terms of the population being spread out over such a large area, there are a lot of roads, um, a lot of infrastructure that, that needs to connect communities with. Um, and, uh, you know, I've been away out of the country for 15 years before uh, I moved to Clearwater in 2019. Um, I just feel coming back, um, the infrastructure hasn't kept up with the population growth. And especially during COVID, with there was a big in, uh, migration you know, uh, for a lack of a better term, of people from the urban centers in the lower mainland out towards rural areas. Um, and uh, and I think that's, yeah, H- healthcare. I don't know if you I could classify, I, I kind of lump healthcare as part of that infrastructure, the basic necessities, basically. Um, I, I recently and, had the pleasure yeah. of chatting to Merlin Blackwell, the mayor of uh, Clearwater, yes. and he said uh, yeah. healthcare is a big issue in that part of the area as well. 
Yeah. I, it's a shame because I, I think we're just lacking some of the, uh, I don't know, the, the software, uh, the hardware, the, the facilities, the hospital. That's part of the, what drew me to move to Clearwater from Hong Kong was that of such a small population base, we have a hospital with an emergency room. We have kindergarten to grade 12. We have all these uh, amenities and well, basic um, ser essential services. But unfortunately, yeah, it's just, I, from what I hear, the problem is just staffing them and uh, keeping, it, keeping it staffed. Um, you know, I, I'm, obviously there's people way more certified and educated than me in those areas. And Mayor Blackwall, he has been a champion of that, of Clearwater and our area for a long time. So I, uh, I thank him for that always. Um, but yeah, sorry, TNRD. So um, yeah, infrastructure and healthcare, um, you know, it is a growing popular, uh, sorry, growing as in like uh, age, uh, aging population. So healthcare is, it's only gonna, the demand on healthcare locally is only gonna get an in increase. Um, and I appreciate the premier or uh, Minister Dix a uh, couple weeks ago, finally, uh, you know, committing uh, to that cancer clinic in Kamloops. So I, so I do see, you know, the province pay attention, other, sorry, other orders of governments, you know, listening to our concerns and, and such. Um, and, uh, and this is my personal feeling, um, like economic development. Um, you know, we, 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 it's been in the news for quite a while about the, uh, the change in the forest industry um, in BC and, you know, all these interior rural towns basically had some part, had a, you know, uh, quite a significant income from those, uh, that forestry industry. And with it going away, um, there has, I, I, maybe I'm mistaken. I personally haven't seen any solid strategy. You know, it's, it's very reactionary, you know, oh, we get a uh, mill closure in Prince George and all of a sudden then the province says, okay, we're going to come up with these uh, economic uh, development or stimulus or, 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 or plans or programs for the mill workers in that mill. Um, but there hasn't been a lot of say, okay, let's focus on a strategy. Let's, let's find an industry that can be applied to these rural communities and let's just go full out and just spend like a full kind of uh, from education uh, of new uh, uh, of kids to go into these industry to having the infrastructure, having the facilities, having the maybe even tax breaks to uh, to motivate some of these industries. I just unfortunately, I, I just don't feel I've seen that. Um, tourism has always been a big thing, like in rural areas uh, such as Area A. Um, but again, with COVID, it's just been slammed. And, and it's a very, as we see with the wildfire, as we see with Tofino right now, Highway 4, it's a very fragile, like, uh, economy uh, industry. You know, you get one road closure and there goes, like, you know, your whole, you know, your town's hotel rooms for an entire weekend. Um, and uh, we're going to talk so, about yeah, tourism it, in a few yeah. minutes here, okay. but I want to oh, okay, stick, okay. Gotcha. I'm going to stick on this point here for a second because. Okay. You are elected by the people of District A. You are elected yeah. by the people, but you sit on a board that has to look at the entire regional district as a whole. Now, yeah. the issues you're talking about are pretty macro issues. They're healthcare, they're infrastructure, which I'm assuming if I talk to your fellow uh, uh, directors, they would say similar issues as well compared to that. But there's the yeah. micro issues. There's the micro issues, whether it be a library, whether it be parks, whether it be uh, certain issues that uh, your community members need and want. How do you balance your your decision making on what's best for the uh, regional district with what's best for the district A of the regional district? Mm -hmm. Um, I'm. I'm fortunate, and, and I've reflected this like with some residents as well in the last few community meetings. Um, Area is very actually very fortunate right now. We're not we're not Lynn, we're not Merritts. We haven't had any major well catastrophes like natural disasters to hit us. Um, we have good part like local parks. Um, we have a school in Vavenby. 
everything seems to be running within the TNRD's actual responsibilities, parks and, and, and such seems to be running fine. So my asks is, well, I mean, okay, the water treatment plant, that's about the only major capital in, um, project that's in the, you know, in my radar in the TNRD. Um, however, um, okay, sorry, going back, sorry, I'm, I'm digressing from your question there. So how do I balance T so let me think of an example. Yes, so they had a vote on a uh, a new spending on the Thompson Nicola Regional Library for a new library, you know, costing million dollars or, or more in uh, in the North Shore of Kamloops. So, but however, that money comes from the pool um, of TNRD uh, 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 capital reserves. Um, that doesn't come from TNRD area A residents property taxes. So I'm I'm fairly I so far the decisions have been fairly um, uh, clear cut that I'm not taking area A's money to spend it in um, in in Blue River area B um, and such. So um, however and and so far and also uh, with regards to staff resources. Um, there are times that you know, uh, yeah. For example, recently I've you know I, I I have a lot of blue pie in the sky ideas sometimes, and I just send to my CAO, hey, hey, there's a solar farm going on over there, and like, what what about yeah, you know, TNRD, um, but you know, I, and I've been told so, hey, you know, yeah, you Yusuf, I I got your email, but just be patient. So we have limited staff resources. Or there has just been a flood in Cash Creek, so. So I'm not going to go and demand, hey, you drop your Cash Creek stuff flooding and come answer my question right now. So, um, so yeah, I'm fair. We are area is fairly fortunate. We don't have anything burning like uh, catastrophes. <laughs> um, so understandable. That makes it, we, we, I was going to say it probably makes your job a lot easier when while you're trying to balance the needs and wants of your community, when they have mm -hmm. things that they already have and want, uh, it makes your job yeah. so much easier to not, while still advocate, not have to bang the door down and try to get your voice heard and make sure that District A is represented. Um, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, that, that does make it easier, yeah. Yeah. So I yeah. want to turn to my last subject now, and this is my favorite subject because I like to learn about your community from you. Okay. And as a tourist, I like to come visit your community. So later on this year, I'm going to be uh -huh. in Clearwater. I'm going to be in Princeton. I'm going to be in Salmon Arms. I'm going to be doing a big tour. I'm going to be doing oh. uh, Kelowna so as well. So I'm going to be coming through your neck of the woods here soon. What are some Sweet. tourist destinations in TNRD and District A that as uh -huh. people listening to this or watching this across Canada and around the world should be uh -huh. stopping in to see? Uh, Helmican Falls, obviously. Uh, that's uh, that's a fairly front country. You don't need to hike. You drive to a parking lot and you can see the, uh, the fourth tallest waterfall in Canada um uh from a viewing platform uh but on the way there you'll see uh dawson falls signs for bailey shoots um signs for uh, mole falls perhaps falls um there's a few falls less such as mole falls you can actually hike down to there are stairs and steps um uh, you know, within probably half an hour, 45 minutes hike each way, um, where you can actually get down to these massive waterfalls. Um, I find that quite a quite a quite a good um, mid country experience. There is other kind of back country experiences, and and uh, okay, I'm gonna digress. I might okay. Digress, man. Digress as much as you okay, want. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, the backcountry exploration of Wells Gray Park. Um, there's like places which is called Stillwater Trail. I did that uh, two falls ago with uh, two other friends. We hiked. It's about six hours each way hike. Um, and so those trails are now fairly overgrown. Um, there was one point where <laughs> I had to use my safety whistle, but. Uh, 
but uh, yeah, because I lost the trail uh, and, and sight of my friends. <laughs> but um, so there is a lot of backcountry um, adventure that has been kind of unfortunately kind of left uh, for nature to take back over. And I would love for more resources and, and you know, from the from the parks and such um, to allow some of even some of our volunteer groups to go in there and do some trail clearing. Um, but yes, so Helmet, the falls, the waterfalls and uh, Clearwater Lake, um, definitely, uh, suggest renting a, a canoe there. There's canoe and kayak rentals at the lake, uh, do that. Um, there's of course the gem of Clearwater, the Dutch Lake. Um, I'm not sure if they have, no, yeah, no, they don't, I didn't see it yet, but they used to, sometimes during the summertime, there's somebody renting out, uh, uh, stand up paddle boards and kayaks on the beach at the Dutch Lake. Um, so bring a, bring a paddle board if you, if you have one, um, or, or hopefully there's one to rent when you're there. Um, and then in terms of area A, um, so outside of Clearwater, district of Clearwater, um, there's a lot of four service roads. Um, there's the timber, uh, the, there's a lot of acronyms in the forestry industry, uh, TFL, uh, timber forestry license, I think. So former logging areas. Um, okay. uh, yeah. Uh, you'll hear a lot of people say oh go up camp two road so that road takes you from clearwater all the way to a hundred mile house um and along wow. that there's like like dozens of like small lakes you can fish in and stuff if you're if you're if you're into fishing i definitely recommend those lakes cold scar and such actually this saturday there's a fishing derby i'm, I'm gonna go to um for Father's Day. Um, so there's fishing and then, uh, or also quadding if you're into uh, ATVs and stuff. Um, there's a fire, uh, uh, an, an old fire lookout on Baldy Mountain. So that trail in, in a fairly, in a fairly, yeah, actually you might get a few scratches from pinstriping from trees, but in a, in a fairly stock Jeep Wrangler, you can get up to like this amazing view. I went up there at night. I can see Kamloops, the lights from Kamloops from the, from that fire lookout. Well, I mean, oh, obviously wow. why they chose that spot to, to do a fire lookout, but, um, but yeah, there's a lot of, of, um, of ex backcountry exploration around, um, in terms it of, it sounds like an outdoor have, paradise. Yeah. It is. Yeah. That's why I moved. <laughs> um, at the same time, you know, uh, an hour and a half away from Kamloops. So, um, and, uh, and rel so we're still relatively undiscovered. Uh, the trails aren't jam packed yet. I don't, I'm not like risking head on collisions with other quads and stuff <laughs> or even snowmobile. Yeah. Like Vail Mount. I, no, sorry. Oops. Not, not to, not to say Vail Mount, you're going to get a head on collision, but, but they're a bit more crowded with the uh, snowmobiler crowds from uh, Alberta and stuff. But whereas we are pretty still undiscovered. So, yeah. So I want to, ask you yeah. after a stressful day after a long day at uh -huh. council meetings after a long day at work where do you yeah. go in district day or in tnrd to just decompress uh -huh. to let everything go and just refocus yourself home <laughs> and home to my wife and kids that's kind of like yeah that yeah that has been uh, coming up on my mind so i i also do like another day job so um, my time with them has been, you know, obviously cut back with the regional district and my day job. Um, but, you know, I, I think it's a good example to set for my kids as well, for them to know that, hey, you know what, sometimes you got to give back a little to, uh, to your community. And that, you know, you're not always, dad's not always supposed to just sit at home and do nothing and just kind of lounge around and relax. Relaxing is good. I still miss that. But um, but uh, hopefully that sends them a good message that, you know, uh, push yourself a little sometimes. Yeah. Have you found the balance uh, difficult to overcome? Because I can imagine there's days that you just want to be Yusuf. But when you go out to your local community events, your director, Sal, and I'm assuming and uh, please apologize. And I know I should never assume because, you know, the old adage. But are there days where you just want to just be Yusuf and not have to worry about being director or because that duty to serve seems so prominent in you, 
you're willing to be director Sal the entire time? Um, you know, you know, there are days where where I uh, do wish. <laughs> I'll, I'm completely honest that yeah, I wish I, I'm just Yusuf, uh, a father and 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 a, and a husband. Um, though, but though usually those are days when when I haven't. It, the, yeah, actually, now that I think about it, it's a bit ironic because those are usually days when I haven't had a board meeting or a TNRD events for a while where I'm just working in a community. But so, you know, the difference between a regional district electoral area such as mine and a town and municipality such as Mayor Blackwell, he's got five other town councillors to, you know, kind of chat and bounce ideas off of, whereas I only see my fellow directors when there's a board meeting. Uh, we, we have a social media, we, we keep in touch, but sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like out here by myself and, and then when things, you know, don't, don't go our way, um, you know, I, I, you know, six months. And sometimes I, you know, that does cross my mind six months. And what have you done, Yusuf? And the water treatment plant is still nowhere closer. Well, maybe a bit, I don't know, maybe a bit closer. I, I talked to a few people. There's, I, I'm bouncing some options and ideas and just brainstorming pie in the sky stuff. But still, I kind of sometimes ask myself, yeah, you know what? Six months into it, what have you done? Like, are people, ha are people actually happier or are they just... Yeah, so so whenever I come to think of that, I'm gonna, you know what? I just kind of wish like I can just, I'm Yusuf. I, I you know, just doesn't concern me. But but um. But you enjoy it though, right? Yeah. Like you, you enjoy, enjoy it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah th there's moments where, and I think those conference. You know, okay, I'll okay. Yeah, I hope. Yeah, th my opinion. Um, before getting involved, you know, personally into local government, I always thought just like a typical taxpayer why are we sending these people over to these you know conferences in toronto and then vernon like for silga and stuff and actually now i know those actually um uh kind of re-energizes my um, my enthusiasm and to to see other people in similar situations that is not just us um there, there's worse problems um and that there's actually other um other organizations out there such as silga and ubcm and fcm which i, I mean i heard of them I, did, I didn't i didn't even know they had controlled funding <laughs> um until you know getting involved personally so now then i learned that okay okay no there's help out there and let's 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 reach out to them let's not just sit here and think that oh it's all i'm i'm working on this all alone there's there's other help so so those are times when i uh when i kind of just re-energizes yeah well that's great so i want to yeah. end on this question yusuf and it's the most important question that i've asked this entire okay. interview it's the million dollar question what uh, makes tnrd and the electoral district a such a unique place to live to work and to raise a family I think we have a very good balance uh, between accessibility to urban centers, urban amenities, um, and and the great outdoors. Sorry, I'm seeing some bylaws, guys, um, <laughs> uh, walking around. Uh, so, like you know, again, like I I kind of see myself as the perfect kind of uh, evaluator. I was, you know, I could have moved all over Canada when I left Hong Kong to come back to Canada, but I chose Clearwater because, and you know, Area A because I start my car at eight. I can be in having lunch. So my my parents still live in Vancouver, and, along with my brother, um, and I could be having lunch with them if I start my car at eight. Um, my kids can go continuously from kindergarten to grade 12, the same group of, uh, of friends, you know, lifelong friends. Um, whereas, you know, oh, I, there were a few areas, uh, yeah, without naming names, uh, I, I looked at where, yeah, you, 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 you have to bet you have to trade off. If you're too, if you're too rural, then you, you know, this local school might only go up to grade you know, 10. And then the last two grades, you're the bus like 45 minutes each way to, to another high school. So, so I find that very, and then we have the hospital and then we have a well lit, well stocked, safe on foods, despite what ever, all of us, including myself, think about the prices. But at the same time, you know, like I said, with the, uh, with the backcountry adventure kind of just playground with that vastness, um it's 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 a very good 
uh, equilibrium, I think. Yeah. Yusuf, I want to thank you so much. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for taking time out of your busy schedule to do this. It's always great to talk to people who are passionate about uh, their community. And I say this with sincerity. You seem passionate about your community, man. It seems like you're doing it for the right reasons. And we need more people like you who are willing to engage and willing to talk about their communities and willing to just be open and transparent with what's going on in their communities. So thank you so much for doing this. No, thank you, Chris. And I, I appreciate what you do, you know, to, to give us a voice. It's, uh, you know, without people like yourself in the media and, and I know you do it very, you, you have a, a good, a lot of passion into it as why well. I've seen your videos, I've seen your write-ups and, and that's very encouraging that there are people who, you know, from all sides that are, you know, in this together. We certainly are. So with that, I want to remind everyone, this has been the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. We'll be back again tomorrow with another new episode of the Cross Border Interviews. Until then, just remember, just keep talking.